Now, after the successful landing of the Chandrayaan-3 mission on the moon, the Aditya L-1 was successfully launched from Sriharikota today. The rocket carried the observatory-class satellite with precision to its intended orbit. Three, two, one, zero. Plus five seconds. Lift off normal. P1 tracking. P3 tracking. Plus Magnificent lift off of PSLV C57 with Aditya L1 on board. Plus 15 seconds. The chief of the Indian Space Research Organization confirmed the successful launch and the injection of the Aditya L1 module into desired orbits. Congratulations. Uh, the Aditya L1 spacecraft has been injected in an elliptical orbit of 235 by 19,500 kilometers, which is intended very precisely by the PSLV, very unique mission mode here with the upper stage of the PSLV taking two burn sequence for injecting the primary satellite for the first time. So I want to congratulate PSLV for such a very different mission approach today to do this mission of Aditya L1 to put it in, in the right orbit. Now, from now, the Aditya L1 will take its uh, journey after some Earth maneuvers. It will start its journey to the L1 point, a uh, very long journey of almost 125 days. So let us wish all the very best to Aditya spacecraft. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi posted on the social media platform X, previously known as Twitter, and congratulated the Indian Space Agency for its monumental success. This is the 59th flight of India's workhorse Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. It is ISRO's 25th mission using this configuration. The craft was put in a highly eccentric Earth-bound orbit. Up next, the spacecraft will perform orbital maneuvers to reach the Sun-Earth uh, Lagrange Point L1. Now, this point is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. Aditya L1's chief mission scientist said that the mission is very unique. No other international mission has the payloads that Aditya L1 carries. So now uh, ISRO has established that uh, it has a capability to uh, uh, send observatory class missions anywhere in the interplanetary medium. Um, ISRO also is developing capability for small satellite missions uh, uh, like Nanosat, uh, CubeSat, as well as the small satellite capability. And that is something which, uh, especially a heliophysics community, could utilize it because we can, at a low cost, we can launch many more such instruments which are essential for heliophysics uh, community here in India. The Aditya L1 mission is uh, now going to venture into space and study the solar activities as well as its effect on space weather. Now here is how Aditya L1 is going to study the sun from space. The spacecraft will study the dynamics of the upper solar atmosphere. It will study partially ionized plasma. It will observe the particle dynamics from the sun and also the heating mechanism of the moon. It will record the temperature, velocity and density of the coronal loops. The magnetic sensors will observe field measurements around the sun. Aditya L1 will also identify sequences of solar processes and these processes include those which can lead to eruptions such as solar flares. The spacecraft carries seven scientific payloads for systematic study of the sun. All payloads are indigenously developed in collaboration with various ISRO centers and scientific institutes. Now, for more updates, our senior correspondent has sent us this report. Listen in. Indeed, it is quite a daunting task to sort of track a spacecraft and constantly communicate with it as it is circling the Earth at at least a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. So, Aditya L1, as it circles the Earth, it's not just being tracked by Indian ground stations or Indian antennae at different locations, but it's also several stations of NASA 
and the European Space Agency that will be tracking India's Aditya L1 craft. So as and when the craft flies over those antennae at their respective sites or respective countries, Aditya L1 signals will be acquired by those antennae and the respective space agencies will be able to talk to Aditya L1 craft, send and receive data and also share that with ISRO. So this is generally a part of international cooperation and goodwill in space that all countries follow, all major spacefaring nations help the other. This is primarily done because of the fact that not every country or not every space agency has the means and wherewithal to install giant antennae. So on an average size such space grade giant antennae have to be 30 to 35 meters in diameter which are giant antennae. So these are expensive, you can't uh, install them everywhere you like and it's expensive and it's also not feasible to operate such a huge network. So what is done is uh, each one of them shares their own antennae and then whenever the craft flies over their territory they track it and share the data so european space agency has said that they are tracking this craft nasa also will be providing assistance so there are so many deep space antennae across the world they will all be working together to ensure aditya l1 is being tracked constantly and of course it's now over to the mission operations team so what is their job their job is to steer the craft away gradually from the earth take it on its designated path and take it to its final destination which is the Lagrangian point one. So as far as communications are concerned, anywhere between 8 to 10 seconds is what it takes to communicate between Earth and 1.5 kilometers, uh, 1.5 million lakh kilometers from Earth which is the Lagrangian point uh, L1 which will be Aditya's final destination. So once in orbit, it will take uh, uh, anywhere between 8 to 10 seconds to you know relay two-way communications between Earth stations and the Aditya L1 craft. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.